Big news in the tech world. Welcome, everybody. It's Merlin Dean. The United States Army has just announced that Microsoft will be passing on their $22 billion contract, handing it over to Andrel, headed by Mr. Palmer Lucky. That means the entire project will no longer belong to Microsoft in any way. So initially, the U.S. Army's new program with Microsoft, it was supposed to bring cutting-edge augmented reality to the soldiers, giving them instant battlefield intel and even drone tracking. But Microsoft's modified HoloLens system, it was a disaster. During the testing, the soldiers complained of glitches and nausea and headaches. So Microsoft dropping the ball turned out to be perfect timing for Palmer. After they shut down the HoloLens project, the Army started looking for a new player, and then boom, Andrew takes the wheel. Now, we don't know exactly what hardware they're going to use, but one thing's for sure. They're about to take combat technology to a whole nother level. This is an incredible U.S. business story about the story of capitalism, about the American dream. It's a full circle moment for the life of a young CEO named Palmer Lucky, an inventor and engineer who as a teenage whiz kid started out in a camper in his parents' yard. And then he single-handedly built the Oculus Virtual Reality Company into a whole new genre. You're about to see an interview with Palmer Lucky and CNBC explaining the new deal with the Army, complexities of today's battlefield, and the amazing tech breakthroughs that his company Andrel is revealing to the world. Let's watch. So joining us now in an exclusive interview is Palmer Lucky, Andrel founder, and for that, the founder of VR company Oculus, which was sold to Facebook in 2014. Palmer, it's great to have you back on the show. And I mention that because in some ways this feels like full circle. Um, I was very surprised to find out that it, with a $22 billion production contract, IVAS represents the second largest investment in virtual reality ever behind Meta, which we know made their investments off of the products that you first made more than a decade ago. Your thoughts on, on what happens next, what this means to take over this contract? Well, you're right that it's a return to form for me in more ways than one. You know, I, yeah, I started Oculus VR and sold that to Meta before, and I, I you know, and was there for a few years before they fired me. But even before that, as a teenager, I worked at the USC ICT Mixed Reality Lab in an army project called Brave Mind that used virtual reality exposure therapy to treat army veterans with PTSD. And the, you know, that, that was really the first time I was exposed to how government technology procurement and development can be done and deployed. And it's, it's definitely something that stuck with me for, uh, for a really long time. Uh, you know, it, it's also interesting that, you know, some people said that Meta acquired Oculus, but uh, given that they've spent, you know, it's, I mean, what is this, is it $60 billion, $100 billion? They've, uh, they, they've in, in a way, Oculus, Oculus kind of sort of took over their company. Um, but for me, this is a really exciting moment. The idea of putting a heads-up display in a radio and a computer on a soldier is an old one. It's been around since Robert Heinlein's novel, uh, Starship Troopers, in 1959, at least. And Andrel's been building a lot of the tools that actually make something like that useful. The AI platform that integrates data from all of our sensors, all of our weapons, over 100 existing DoD platforms into a model of the battle space in real time. That's what you really need to make something like this as powerful of a tool as it should be. Not just the ability to see you know, the thermal spectrum and the visible spectrum and the near IR spectrum, but the ability to see into a digital model of the past, present, and future, and to seamlessly team with large packs of autonomous weapons. What does this do? And you've, Andrew's been growing gangbusters for a number of years now. You've made acquisitions, just recently announced that you're going to build uh, this super factory, uh, for lack of a better term, in Ohio as well. What does adding this contract and everything that goes along with it into the mix do to further expand Andrel? Well, Andrel builds a lot of different systems across a lot of different uh, domains. So air, land, sea, subsea, space, cyberspace, eventually subterranean. And IVAS and systems like it are going to be the portal through which the warfighter commands and controls all of these different autonomous weapons, autonomous sensors. That really gets you to a much greater than one-to-one -one ratio of fighter to system. And I think that by giving people these types of systems, augmenting their view of the real world so that they can share data seamlessly with these robotic systems, so that they can all be working off one common shared view of the world, you can be a lot more effective, a lot more lethal, and keep yourself a lot safer than you would if you're working with the unaided eye, the unaided ear, the unaided mind. 
This comes as, and I reported on this last week on Friday, I reported that you're, you're raising another, you're a Series G up to $2.5 billion that would double Andrel's valuation to $28 billion pre-money. What can you tell us about that and how this builds on that momentum? Well, you know, lots of people report lots of things. When we have can something to announce it? on doing a raise, uh, I would, I'd, be, I'd be down to talk about it. But you're right, Andrel's had a lot of traction. We've been winning major fighter jet contracts, major submarine contracts. Now with this, we can continue my vision of augmenting the human form to surpass the limitations of our visual and cognitive systems. I'm one of those crazy people who believes we're gonna spend all of our lives, or at least a large chunk of our lives, looking at the world through, you know, whether you call it AR, VR, augmented reality, wherever you want to call that continuum. I'm, I'm a believer that we're going to mediate our view of the world with technology. And this is, this is a powerful step towards doing it for the military first. Eventually, that's going to come to everyone. Uh, but I think that the really important thing here is we're expanding into an area that is directly built on top of human warfighters. We've mostly focused mm -hmm. on building robots, robotics, things that are unmanned. Uh, we've actually had a warfighter systems business line for a few years now that we've never talked about publicly. And uh, this is, we're gonna be rolling into our warfighter systems division, which I've been leaning on the technological development side, kind of focusing on human augmentation, human performance, okay. and what the future of that looks like. The battlefield goggles of the future in 3D. He always believed tech should defend freedom, not just entertain people in the metaverse. Microsoft dropping the ball turned out to be perfect timing. They shut down HoloLens 2, the army started looking for a new player, and boom, Andrew takes the wheel. We don't know exactly what hardware they're going to use, but one thing's for sure. They're about to make combat technology next level. This isn't just about cool gadgets. This is about making sure America stays ahead in an increasingly dangerous world. Our military needs the best technology built by people who actually care about national security. Lucky and Andrew aren't just selling gear. They're making sure our warfighters dominate the battlefield.